Hi, welcome back to UAT Solutions. In this tutorial, we will discuss the star and delta actual internal winding connections and visualize the physical state of the terminal connected to each other. Let's consider one side of a transformer configuration, and let's just call it primary in this case. So here are the three lines bringing in power to the transformer. These are the three single phase inductors that make up the transformer. How are these inductors connected to the incoming lines? Well, we need to ask ourselves, what is the connection? So let's say for our first example here, we're going to call it a delta connection. So in our minds, a delta looks like this. How do we convert this shape into this other disposition? Now notice if you look at the delta, you see that each inductor is connected to two other inductors. And what I mean by that is A is connected to both B and C, B is connected to both A and C, and C is connected to both A and B. And it's really easy and convenient to see this in the triangle shape, but how do we show that here? How do we go from one inductor connecting it to both the other inductors using the three lines in this schematic over here? So it should seem pretty obvious, but we see that there are two connection points in each of our inductors here. So one of those connection points should be dedicated to its connection to the appropriate matching incoming power line. So A should be connected to A in, at one point, and B should be connected to B at one point, and C to C. And that will leave us with one connection taken up and one connection on each of the inductors uh, to assigned to, to assign to make this connection between the other inductors. Let's add the three uh, incoming power lines to our delta diagram just to make sure that we're seeing everything appropriately visually and we can kind of go through and mark off now the connections we've made. So A is connected uninterrupted to the A. So that means our A incoming power goes directly to our A inductor. That means this leg here, the connection is now established. Now B goes directly to the B inductor, so this leg has now been established. That connection is there. C, likewise, goes directly to the C, so that connection has been established. So now we have the three of, three of the six connections made, both in our horizontal three-line diagram here and in our actual delta configuration diagram here. So now up here we see that we need to connect A to B somehow. A needs to go over to B. So let's make the connection. A is connected now to the B line. Right there. There we go. So now that gets us from A to B. Now we see B needs to be connected to the C line. So let's connect B up down here over to the C. There we go. And lastly, C needs to get connected to the A line. Now you may stop and say, well, we already have connections at those points. But you see, what we talked about with the delta construct is there are two connections necessary for every single line. So we have three incoming power lines, but six total connections. So let's trace how the completed circuit runs through all of these connection points from one diagram to the, the other. So from the A to the B section of the delta here, we're going to see that connection in green. And let's show it now on our other diagram. We go from the inductor connection point up to the B line, which establishes our other connection with the B inductor connection point. And let's now do the leg from B to C. So this inductor connection point to that inductor connection point runs like that on the delta diagram. And on our three line, we start here and end here. So we can make the connection along this C line there. And finally, we'll finish up this C connection point here to the A connection point here. We'll make that in blue so that little leg starts here, the C inductor connection point, and finishes at the A inductor connection point. And we see that it travels along the A line. 
So now let's visualize the completed circuit that we see, which is unique to a delta connection. We see that if we begin with A, we can continue over to B, which B then goes into C, and C returns us back to A. Circuit completed. We can follow that exactly here in our other diagram. We start here, we move back up and around, A goes to B, B goes to C, and C returns back up to A. completed and unbroken circuit, which is unique to the delta. We won't see this exactly uh, with our Y diagrams. And now let's take a look at a Y example. We showed a primary side delta connection for a transformer in the previous example. Now let's look at what the Y example is. So here are three incoming lines providing power to our inductors. And we're going to have, just like the delta example, we are going to have three single phase inductors that uh, we're going to have on our transformer. And we ask ourselves, how are these connected? And we ask the same question. What is the way we are connecting them? We're doing a Y connection. So let's talk about the unique things about a Y connection and how it will affect um, what it is we're wor working through here. So this now visually, after we worked with the delta, should seem actually really kind of painfully obvious. The A incoming power line has a single connection to our A inductor. So A gets connected to A. Very simple, single connection right there. B incoming power line connected, single connection straight to the B inductor. And likewise for C. C connects straight to C. And we can see that visually with our Y really, really simply. So it we're, we've managed those connections here that we're xing off. Now, our only other point of connection is this middle point right here. What exactly are we going to do here? One of the great strengths of the Y connection is the simplicity with which it can employ a neutral conductor. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see now the neutral come into play. So let's draw our neutral line up here. So actually, we have a fourth line, very different from the delta uh, connection. We have now, instead of three, we've got four. That neutral now is established as the center connecting point in the Y, and we see that it, at that center point, branches out into the three unique inductors. So it should be obvious, visually seeing this, that each of the inductors have to have a direct and immediate connection to the neutral. So very simply, we make that connection appear here. So now we have six total connections and four lines. So now let's in, uh, illustrate our flow of connection. We'll start out now on the A line, the, the line that's bringing in power, and we'll bring it all the way to our, essentially to our neutral connection, that central connection in the Y that we see visually here. How does that look in our three line, net, well now four line diagram? We go here. makes the connection to the A inductor, which is then connected to the neutral. The B connection, starting out in our B line, we can show here, and that comes in, crosses the B inductor, and connects to the neutral. So let's follow it here on this other diagram. We start here. It makes the connection to the B inductor, and just like before, we see it gets connected up to the neutral. And now we do the same for C. Once again, following the same path from the incoming power line to the C inductor to the neutral. And it's completed. What you can see here, a distinguishing characteristic of the Y, is we can't use that yellow tracing um, like we did in the delta to form that complete circuit. These lines just go out. Um, and so there's another distinguishing characteristic you can see here in the way that it's connected versus the way the delta is connected. So notice now with the neutral connections, how we have three connections, three lines coming in and joining in one on the neutral. We'll demonstrate that here with this yellow box shown there. That is